Hello everyone, this is Bonus Grandmaster Sabina Foyshore. I'm here at the San Luis Chess Club and you are watching uh, Puzzler's Paradise. So for today I've prepared a bunch of, I'd like to call them miniature studies. Um, and if we will still have time, then we will go over some TAL games, some TAL positions, tactical positions. But first, I would like to start with some interesting um, end games, um, end game studies that um, have some cute tactical motifs. So we have this position. What do you think about it? Do you know it? A lot of people. If no, <laughs> no, okay. You're going to sacrifice. Okay. So what's the, what's the move? Wait, how do you sacrifice it if you play rook f2? So you want to sac... Oh, you want to give check and then take yeah, the pawn in h2. The pawn okay. Does everyone agree with that idea? No. Or did you have something else in mind? Okay, you have someone? Okay. Okay. Someone who wants to... <laughs> okay. Yes, so we have two ways of sacrificing the rook. One of them is rook h1, and the other one is rook f2. King goes somewhere, and then we sacrifice here. Right, so if we do this, we have to calculate and make sure that by the time we go grab those two pawns, black doesn't make it back to c8, right? So does black make it here? Yes, he does. Black does make it. So that is the reason why this is one of the first uh, tactical motifs that was invented uh, in a study. And it was rook sacrifice. And you're pretty much forced to take the rook. Because if you move the king, for example, here, what is white going to do? Yes? King d3. Oh, so you want to try to go directly? Yes, of course, you can do that. If you want to be more tricky, you can play king f1. Because eventually, black will have to move away from their pawn, right? So king goes here, and then <laughs> they will lose the pawn. So there's no point for black to try to waste any time, so they take the rook. OK, so what do we do now? Where? Yeah, yes. OK, so we have the choice between king f2 and king f1, right? Yeah. You're sure king f2 is the one? Yeah. OK. And then can you tell me the line after king f2? Uh, king f2, b5, bishop, b5, bishop, 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 Very good, yes. So <laughs> if everything is forced. Uh, and this is the type of position that you can actually uh, calculate if you want to, but now you have the mate, and of course you wanted the king in f2, not in f1, to allow the promotion uh, with check. OK, let's go to the next position. In this position, uh, we have a similar theme. Right? It's a similar theme. So what do we do here with white to win the game? Yes. Bishop where? Bishop a1, king takes a1. King c where? So king c2 or c1? c1. OK, who says king c1? Who says king c2? No one says king c2. Interesting. So let's calculate. Let's figure out what black is going to do, right? So you play king c2. Uh, which ones did you say? It's king c1, right? Yeah. So whenever my pawn reaches b2, it will be with check, right? And then you move your king, and then I will promote, right? So you actually play king c2, very important. You know, that matters. Let me show you why king c1 is not so great. Oops. I don't know what I did. King c1, b5, right? We cannot take en passant. We're going for the. And what do we do now? 
we are in big trouble because they will promote. We will not lose, or maybe we do lose. No, because we can move the king somewhere here and then when they promote to a queen, what do we do? Queen h8, king, queen b2. If you want, you can do queen c3 check and then you can play queen c2. I guess, and it should be a draw. Right, so going back to that position, what do we do here? King c2, and w what's the final move? Can somebody tell me the final move of this line? How will the position end? What's the last move? Queen c2 mate, yes. So b3, we are happy, we take it, we let you promote the a pawn, but then we have the typical you know, mate when the A or H pawn promotes, when we have queen versus A pawn <coughs> and mate. And obviously, like, it didn't matter for us if they promote to a knight, right? Because queen versus knight is winning. Okay, great. Let's go to the next one. What do you know about this position, queen versus rook? Should be easy, right? Should be winning for black, right? Okay. It's white to move, though. Does white, by any chance, have any way to draw this? Well, there's got to be, right, if I show the position. But, but what is the idea? Now take a couple of moments and think about it. Okay, we have two hands up. Yes? Yes. Okay, so what if, so if the king goes on the e-file, we have rook e7 exactly pinning the queen draw, simple. What about if the queen, king goes to f6? Uh, yes. Rook f9? Queen takes f7, checkmate. Uh, how do you get, oh yeah. Okay, uh, yes? Rook g6 and then king takes stomach. Right, so in this position, feel free to give me a lot of checks, right? So we have to advance, and you still give checks. If I play king f6, I think, oh, okay, I'm winning. Oopsie, right? If king h6, no, if I go king h6, you cannot give rook g6 check. So what do you do here if I play king h6? Yes. Rook h7. If I take stalemate, if I don't take, and I go here, what do we do? Yes? Rook h6. And I have the stalemate there. That's why it's very important. I mean, I, I remember one of the first times that I saw this position, I thought, okay, I need to be very careful. If I ever stay queen versus rook, which has never happened to me before, uh, it doesn't happen so often, but uh, just make sure your king doesn't get stuck on one side of the board. Uh, also, your queen should never be, as far as uh, I remember, should never be in a knight position from the king. Uh, you should always try to keep it like kind of a little bit far. So when you, you try to keep the opponent's uh, rook pinned, oftentimes, but don't bring it too close, because that's the moment where you allow these types of stalemating ideas, so you want to avoid that. What do we think about this position? What do you know about rook versus bishop? Draw. How do you make a draw when we have a rook versus a bishop? In which corner should we bring our king? Uh, yes? to the opposite corner of the bishop so that the bishop can stay and uh, hide, I mean, help you hide in the corner. Okay, but here white has an extra pawn too, so it should make it a little bit easier for them to have some chances to win. Or maybe not. Can white win this? If you would want to win here with white, which move would you play? F7? Right. 
So that would be the move that you would want to know what's going to happen if you play f7. So what's, what's happening after f7? Can we take the pawn with black? Yes. Yes. King f6, and it's over. Your king is not in the corner yet, right? What do you play here? Uh, you cannot take the bishop right now because it's pr protected, but uh, you're going to play this now too. Then the bishop needs to move somewhere. We have this check, and now just waiting move, right? And you haven't made it to the corner. If that would be the corner, just imagine f8 would have been the h8 corner, then of course this is a stalemate, right? But it's not a corner, so we can just move and we lose the bishop. So after f7, what is the problem? Why can't white play f7 in this position? King g7, you don't need to hurry to take the pawn immediately. After king g7, white is out of moves, and our next move will be bishop takes f7. White has no way to protect the pawn a second time. And, okay, if you sacrifice it, then our king is close enough to the corner that they will be able to make a draw. For example, after this move, how is black making a draw here? Yes? King g8. You can also play king e8 because I cannot follow the, uh, the opposition and try to threaten the mate. Exactly. So, if white wants to play f7 to win, what should they do first? Yes? King g6. Okay, what do we do with black? Bishop check. And you have to go back. So that doesn't seem to be a progress for white. Another idea that white has in this position is try to chase this bishop away. So we have to be very careful how we move it. Where do we move the bishop now with black? Bishop d3. OK. And uh, let's say we try to come like this. Bishop b5. Bishop? What is happening now? Hmm? It looks like white is going to win, no? Bishop a6. Okay. How is white winning now? Rook a7. Bishop c4 check. And now if we play king g7, there's just king e7 and promote. So I think we're kind of done here with black, right? So the only idea that black needs to do, basically, in this position is make sure he keeps his bishop on this diagonal. So anytime you push f7, I can play bishop g6. And I also need to make sure that whenever you want to play king g6, I will give you a check. Yes. Bishop f7, can I give you a check? Wait, let's see. You go there. Hmm? Yeah. And it's over, right? Yeah. So where do we move the bishop only? Far away, okay? <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't put it in f7, okay? Just keep it far away and just make sure you can give the check. And unfortunately, white, even with the extra pawn, cannot have a way to progress this. So this is a draw? This is a draw, yes. So even with the extra pawn, if you know the right way to do it, then it's going to be um, it's going to be a draw. So we have the next position. It's uh, quite similar, just that now it's really really important on where you move the bishop. You cannot just move it anywhere. <coughs> Let's see. 
We already have the pawn technically, right, on the seventh rank here on second, because we have color switch, right? And uh, white hasn't had the chance to move the king in g2, because black's king has gotten control of it before, right? So now we already have the pawn there. Are we going to be able to win with black? Hmm? Uh, you hope, yes, I hope so too. So <laughs> let's think about it. What would be the idea? These all kind of have been made in similar, um, like uh, one after, not one after another, but the themes uh, are repeating themselves in a way in, in studies. So someone would come with a theme and then someone else would try to improve it or make something beautiful out of it. And um, some of these positions have become theoretical positions as well, like the Philidor, for example, right? So yes, yes. So let's try to think a little bit in this position. It's actually, um, it's, it's uh, white to move. But first I want to, to think about plans here. W how you want to win with black. So you said king g4. So you want to bring your king to f3 and then just mate me, right? So when you move the king away from h3, can't I play king g2? Or maybe it was black to move here. Uh, we'll see in a second. <laughs> okay. So the idea of black in order to try to win this is to switch the position of his rook to get it from the second rank to the f file first. If they manage to do so, then their king is free to move because your king will not be able to move to g2 because we will promote. Do we agree on that? Yes? No, uh, no, it's, w it's white to move. It's white to move in this position. So black is trying to find a way to get the rook from second rank to the F file to make sure you are stuck with your king in F1, agreed? So we need to avoid allowing for that to happen because if they make it, then mm -hmm. we can't do anything. So we need to make sure that we are able to attack the pawn so whenever they put the, the rook on the f file we can capture it. So the good move in this position is bishop c7. What happens if we play bishop d6? Okay. We play bishop c5. Yes, very good. King g3. Now, um, we wanted always to be on the G, G file. Why we wanted G file and not E file? Well, first of all, because there used to be a rook there, which was restricting us, but also um, to avoid the checks. So now we have the same position as before, right? And it's over for white because check is coming and you're losing your bishop. What if we play bishop E5 to control the F file and make sure you don't get your rook on the F file? What does black do to win? <coughs> yes? Rook e6. Okay, and can I play bishop d4? Yes? Rook a5. If you play rook e6. Rook e1, king takes. So you have to play king g3. And now it's a little bit different because your rook is not far away threatening the checks. So because of that, I have enough time to just move my bishop and I'm fine here. I can survive. So that's why this is a very beautiful study, I think. So bishop c7 is the only move. The idea is as follows. If you play rook a7, we have bishop b6 fork. So you cannot make it. Make sense? So now if we want to make it, we play rook b2. We're threatening rook b7. We're trying to go on light squares. Rook b7, rook f7. So now, what does white do? Where does white move the bishop? D6. Bishop d6, yes. Once again, if you go to b6, we go there. You cannot just move the rook randomly somewhere to bring it on the f file because we just grabbed the pawn. So we continue, right? Bishop e5. 
Again, the same thing. So obviously, you go rook d, rook uh, here. Good. Now, let's find a good move for black too, trying to win this. Yes? Rook e2. Rook e2. Cute move, right? Feel free to take my rook if you want, but it's not so great for you. Because now things change, right? So obviously, you cannot do that. So now the question is, where do we move our bishop with white? You cannot move it on any square because, again, remember black's idea. They want to attack your bishop and get on the f file, and you might be losing. So where do we move the bishop? Yes? Bishop b8. What's the difference if you move the bishop to b8 than if you move it to d6, for example? If you move it to d6, then black would play rook d6. OK. Bishop d6, rook e6. confused. So bishop b8, I agree with you. Why is this wrong? You said after rook e6, what, oopsie, I keep, you say that if I play rook e6, what do you do here? That's the move that you play. You can stop it too. But bishop d6 is a mistake because it's of something else. No rook c2, we had that before, right? Rook c2, we were repeating, right? Rook c2, bishop e5, and we're repeating the same thing. So now black is trying to figure out a Zugzwang idea. He places his rook on a square, and regardless of where you will move the bishop on the diagonal, and I think it's quite obvious why the bishop needs to stay on the diagonal to avoid you from playing king g3, allowing you from playing king g3. So where does black move the rook here, after which it's over? Rook d2. Can't I play bishop e5? And we have the same position as before? I know, right? It's tricky. This is a tricky position. You win it with only moves. Rook where? D2? It's on E2 already. Rook B2. Why? Remember before, like if you are the one who plays bishop C7 here, for example, don't we get the thing that we wanted on white? No? Right? What do you do here? <laughs> you just move the bishop and then I play rook f7. So the line that I had here was bishop e5, rook b5. What do we do now with black? King, uh, I had that move. Why did I put that move? King g3, right? This is the line that we've been talking. I don't know why I put rook f5. Made a mistake. Because here, black uh, is not winning anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I had a wrong, uh, wrong line. Yeah, king g3, and we're winning. So in this position, the only move that makes a draw is bishop b8. We're going back to the start. Because what's happening if we play this? Very strong move. Come on, take a minute and try to find it. Why to move and make a draw? Bishop g3, yes. And you've managed to get your rook to f8, but unfortunately, you've also <laughs> managed to stalemate me, yeah. And you do not make it in time to f3. So if you go king g4, what do we do with white? Which piece takes? King or bishop? Bishop. Bishop takes. The rook is on the e file. When you play king f3, you're not threatening mate. So we can just move our bishop somewhere. Not, uh, not to h4, because then we would be mated, but somewhere 
along this. Where do we move it actually? Can't we just play King G1? No, we can't. How do we make a draw here? Yeah. Actually, yeah, should I put one more move? Crazy, huh? So that is the way that black is not able to win. So white needs to make only moves to be able to make a draw. Who, what's happening in this position? You should go for a draw, yes. So how do we do this with white? King H4. King F4, King H3. Don't give up, king f3, king h2, is that a good move? What do we play with white here? No one? What's happening? The king is in h2, so what is black's threat now? Nothing. There's no threat now, right? You can't play a2 because we take with check and then you lose that pawn too. So then what do we do with white here? King where? Yeah, you can just try to approach. And he's going to realize, oopsie, I made a mistake, so he'll try to probably go back. And then, yes, you can give check and then go back. But it was important to try to keep him restricted to the margin so that he didn't have the opportunity to play too. What do you think about this position? Excuse me? You should go for a win, yes, of course. So what's the problem, though, that you have here with white? Black has a passed pawn and has a bishop too. So how will you be able to mate or win? I mean, I guess you want to mate. If Let's talk ideas first. Because the line afterwards is not maybe as impressive. If you understand the idea, it's going to make it really fun. So what do we want to do here with white to win? Get the king too? OK, so I will just bring my king up to h4, if you bring your king to, h7, uh, to f7. I'll just bring my king up. It is white to move, yes. So don't think moves yet. Try to understand the ideas in the position. How can black try to make a draw? Not, I mean, what's his idea to make a draw? It's not try, like he actually wants to do that. Get rid of the pawn, Get rid of the pawn right? So just play f1, whatever piece, promotion. And then just push his bishop in d4, for example, on the diagonal, as long as you don't have yours in e5, of course. But just basically put the bishop somewhere on, on a dark, uh, uh, on a long diagonal that keeps you from restricting his king to the margin, right? To the corner. It's already in the margin. To, to restrict it to the corner and then you don't have a, a way to get uh, around the bishop. So definitely you should not allow that promotion, right? So what's the idea, after all? I, s I, I only hear moves. I didn't hear the, your idea. Uh, I want to check the bishop g5. Like, I want to mate. Right? Of course you want to mate, but tell me the idea first. How will you do it? Because you, I want to promote, right? 
So first you blockade, right? That's the idea. First you're going to make sure that pawn is blockaded and also you're going to make sure you don't allow this bishop from g1 to go to h2, right? Okay, so how will you bring the king, black's king? How will black's king be forced to go where you want him to go? Because you'll only have a free bishop, right? And your king. You're not understanding what <laughs> exactly what I want. What I want to say is the fact that you will actually be able with just a dark square bishop and your king to attract this bishop to wherever you want it to go without getting too much help from your light square bishop, which I think is kind of impressive. Because normally, I mean, you cannot do that if you just use one bishop. But it's a draw, right? No, white is winning here, yes. Especially because these of these two pieces, uh, they're, we're going to use them in a very nice fashion. So we start with check, of course. So we're going to try to see what's happening if he's going in that direction first. That's the thing. If you make moves with that tempo, I can promote. Don't forget that. Yes. Yes. No, now I have a threat, right, f1. So now you go back, and here I have to decide what I'm doing, right? I cannot move my, I cannot promote and I cannot move my bishop, so I need to move my king, right? Okay. Let's say I go there. Then now you give a check, and you've brought me where you wanted to bring me. Then you go back. I have to go somewhere on the h file, and then we'll go king f7. So I have the other line. I didn't really put this, so we'll go on the main line here. If black just goes there directly. We do the same, right? Bishop d6, restricting. So now you're going to try to stay on the h file. OK, how do we bring you from there down to h4 maybe or something like that. Yes. King f7, king h6. Bishop f4, very good. Now I think it makes sense that I cannot go king h7 because we will have a mate in two, right? So we have to go here. Bishop e2 checking h4. Mm -mm. Don't forget about your king. You cannot mate with the bishop alone, right? We bring our king. He still remains restricted and he still pushed down, right? What do we do now? Looks like he might try to escape. King where? King e5. And the thing is, now, if he goes back, we made like a small triangle here, but we keep him restricted, so he still has to go down. If in this position he had gone here, what would, you do, what would we do with white? Yes? King Just king f5. <laughs> still mate, but wait a second, you still have a bishop that can move, right? So I think now it's not a problem to figure out how you're going to win. That's why black is going over here. Okay. What do we do now? Last part. Still important. We were able to bring him all the way from h7 to h4. But still not. Bishop g? Bishop g2. Can I promote? And. Oh, I see what you want to do. Right. Uh, bishop g2. Can I play king h5? Oh, OK. Maybe this works too. Ah, 
Oh, but sorry, wait, wait a second, I'm confused. You tricked me here. Wait, what's your threat? <laughs> I escaped in G3. <laughs> I almost forgot about that, right? I don't need to go to H5. I can go King G3, right? Okay, so in this position, yes? We made the, we make a waiting move. Bishop H six. The thing is, Black has three moves in this position, right? He can play King H five. Oopsie. Can play King H five. Can play King G three, or he can exit with his bishop finally after such a long time, right? If he goes King H five, what's the mate in two that we have? Bishop G five. Yeah, that that was your idea you wanted to do earlier, and then Bishop E two and over. No way to stop it. What if he goes bishop h2? Come on. Yes? Bishop g5. Yes. Bishop bishop Thank you for the bishop, right? So last line is to actually go king g3. And now we're using again this Zugzwang idea. And now, King G4. What do we do now? Mate in three, right? King H3 or F3. You said King H3 here, that works too. Just we need to take this first and then mate. I know, I thought this was nice. Uh, when you realize that you can actually utilize um, your your bishop, dark square bishop only, to actually restrict black skin. This is quite simple. It's think. Oftentimes you find yourself in in uh, queen and pawn versus queen end games, and you're struggling a lot to get your pawn to the seventh rank or promote it. But here there is a tactical idea with which you're going to be able to win quite fast with white. What is that idea? No, it's winning for white. Yeah, you just check on A3. Check on A3, king uh, B6. Oh, the is pinned. Yes. <laughs> That's a small problem that you have. The pawn is pinned. No. But it needs to stay that way. The black queen cannot move from there because you'll obviously promote. So. How do we make this position? Queen A4 check? Queen takes? Right, but I mean, you want that idea, but now what's the, I mean, you're not going to win, right? If you sacrifice the queen, then you're going to win the Right, but then there will be queen versus queen, right? Hmm? Yeah, it's, so that's that's losing. Yeah, yeah. But why do you want to sacrifice your queen? Like, if you sacrifice your queen, you need to promote and then try to get it back, so that you stay with an extra queen, right? I'm confused. So you want to play queen a4 here, and then you want to promote. Okay, what does black do? You're mated, right? Don't, uh, that <laughs> you don't want to do that, right? S yes, do you have? No? Okay. Queen B2. What is the idea exactly after Queen B2 if I just play King A5, for example? Oh, 
Yes, you definitely need a waiting move, but you need to also restrict him from playing too many moves as well. Queen b4. Now the king is restricted, so the queen is the only one that can move, right? So regardless of the square where the black queen moves, they're going to lose. Let's start with the easiest one. No. Queen a4, king b6, and... And yes, no, no, no. What do we want to do? Let's think about that again. We want to promote check queen, right? When we promote it, we want it to be check queen. So then it's simple, the answer. Ah, queen, B3. queen B3 check, yeah. Check queen. Skewer, these are my favorite stuff. <laughs> when that happens, it's just like, I can't wait for that. Like, I remember when I was a kid, and I was doing these pawns that you had to calculate when they promoted, and then I was promoting with check queen. It was my favorite. Sure. So, wait. Back up to the start. So you played queen before to put black's king in Zugzwang. Now black needs to maintain his queen on the diagonal because if he doesn't, you just promote. So we just tried for the moment queen d5. Now the same thing happens if the queen is in f3, right? Check, check. Your king cannot come close enough. Like I make sure that there are at least two squares between the two. So now, again, we promote and we secure the queen, right? So he can go to g2 as well, but it's not going to make a big difference because we will just do it in b2. And qu quite similar thing will happen after queen h1. What will happen here? Yes? Queen a3. Queen b2, and then what do I do? If I go to a6, for example, or on the a file, you do the same thing. And if I try to go, for example, to c6. Hmm? Yeah. What? yeah, you can make a queen. Sorry, I'll go to c5. This is a nice idea to know. I don't know how many of you have gotten the chance to play queen end games with just a pawn up. Usually you have more and then you keep trading and you get to one. But it's a nice idea to know. There's another famous study I think I might have shown last time I was here um, with that there was a pawn in E7 that somehow you're still like giving some checks and then you're promoting and it was skewering. But um, yeah. So here, what do we play? I think we can go king a7, no? And then if black plays this move, we just, what do we do? Check, king somewhere, and then we go there. You cannot pin us anymore and your queen can't just make it to the a file. And then even if it could, we can always play queen a7, but you can't, so win. This is, this is quite famous. I hope everyone knows this one. This is quite famous. Yeah? We know it? OK, what's the last move? I want people to tell me the last move, if you know. Yes? Rook a5. Rook a5. No, that's not the last move. Yes? Rook c1 mate. Okay, uh, that's, yeah, I guess, if you move the rook, yes. But was the move before that then? Uh, who said king? Yeah, king b3, right? So this is the famous position. So you push, right? So black keeps giving checks. You cannot go over there. 
because then simple draw, black is quite happy, right? So what you're going to try to do is come all the way down to b3. So when they give you this check, you play king c2, and now you should be winning because you promote the next move, and they cannot stop the pawn. But they have a way to save themselves, which is which one? What move? Rook d4. So if you promote into a queen, which a lot of us would really want to, then stalemate. So we save ourselves. But white is smart too, so they promote into a rook. <laughs> They're still threatening the mate, and your only way to defend that is this move. And now the final move, king b3, threatening both rook and mate. And um, yeah, uh, so this is a very famous everyone should know. The reason I put it here is to remind you of the idea so that we can figure out the next position with white to move. So do you, do you had to know that one so that you can have an idea uh, on how this one might go. Let's hear someone who didn't say so much today. Uh, and if I take the pawn to 95. So you try to avoid giving up that pawn. Right? Well, black's threat is to take the pawn, right? So we only have one move basically here to avoid giving up the pawn. Okay, so let's, you know. Well, he has to take, right? He has to take and it's with check. What do we do now? Knight d4. And the knight d4 is also controlling the square where the rook might go and stop. Then you have to take the knight, and what do we play here? King c3, rook d1. I mean, rook can also go to uh, b8, right? No, the pawn will capture the rook. So we, we got basically the same position. I mean, I should have maybe just shown you this, but I thought I would remind you about the other idea. So now we have the same as before, right? you got to stop the skewer, but you also have to stop the promotion. So then we'll have a rook and the same thing as before, right? King b3, next move. And uh, I'm not sure who invented this one. I remember we're really looking for it. And um, maybe it was from a game. Maybe it was from a game, but I, I saw it quite recently. So I thought, OK, it's nice. It's the exact same idea. Now, this is something quite interesting to know. How does white draw here? It's white to move. White to oh, move and draw. White is going up, yeah. yes. OK, so you're saying that in this position we play a5, takes, takes. What do we do now with black? Yeah. King takes or rook takes? What do we do now? Yes? Uh, I have another move not taking the rook then. Okay. Can I have to play anything? Yes. <laughs> it's quite funny, isn't it? You are right. You're right about the idea, but you don't trade the rooks. That, and here, amazingly, you have two extra rooks that you cannot win. <laughs> That's that's really bad. I mean, can you imagine playing this? You think you're winning, and then if you do it this way, you're going to lose, right? And what? It's black to move. Threatening mate, so we need to promote into a knight. I don't know. What's what's happening here? Why would this be a draw? Or why wouldn't it be a draw? I don't know. What's happening? Rook G7. What's happening now? If it goes here? Right, and you win the knight. 
If I go here. Just wait. There's no stalemate. Then king, rook b7, king c8, rook a7, king b8. You have to go with the idea of mate in order to win this when there's a mar knight at the margin. Yeah. Okay, let's do a last position. This also is quite cute. And it involves one or two of the ideas we've already seen today. It is way to move. What do you think is happening here? Hmm? Go for a check. Draw, okay. We go for a draw, okay. How do we go for a draw? Because it seems quite dangerous for white. What is black's idea of win? Promote. Just promote, right? It's quite simple, so. Bishop takes e3, and if I just promote? <laughs> okay. Rook f4, rook e1. Rook f3. Interesting. Yes? Rook e1. Rook takes e3. Rook f3. What's happening there? Not quite sure if you're drawing that position. That is not the solution. Rook f4 is not the solution. Rook f4, I know why it's not the solution. I just played rook c2, uh, rook b2. And then I want to play e2, and then one of those will promote. I think you cannot stop both, right? OK. So what do we do? Last minute of focus. I don't know how I stopped that f1 from Right, so you have two ways to stop the pawn from okay. promoting. Rook f4 or rook h1, right? King b2. Don't give up your ideas. Yes. What's the final move? Bishop d2. Uh, n no, but okay, let's hear the line. Rook h1. 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 Okay, yes, yes, you're right. If I play that. But basically, I have no moves, so you can stop here. Because when I try to move my rook, we take. We already have seen today bishop versus rook. And the cool stuff about this position is that, uh, again, amazing. You have a rook and a pawn, yet you cannot win because you haven't managed to bring your king close enough to protect your pawn. And there was no other way you could have done it because this opposition is just killing you. 
if you also had a way to give like an intermediate check, of course, you would have won too, but there's no way. So yeah. So once again, I wanted to show this line. I think after this move, um, I think this is the reason why it does not work because I don't see how you can stop E2. Uh, you can no, no, these pawns come in this direction. Oh, you can play bishop h4? Then I really don't know why that's... Okay, then it's rook c2. Bishop h4, rook c4. I was thinking rook b2 so that, you know, whenever I push e2, you cannot take so that I promote. Maybe it's rook d2 then. One of these moves has to be the reason why. I didn't check, I didn't check that move before. But one of these moves is going to stop you because I'm threatening check and then promote. And, and also e2. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this class, and uh, I'll see you next week, same time. <laughs>